Today you guys are in for a treat. You know why? Because if you think this economy is bad, then the problem isn't the economy, the problem is you. This story that we're about to talk about basically says that. And I just think this is hilarious, guys, because there's so many things that we're gonna talk about with this that just goes to show you the disconnect between people that are believing things are great right now and the people who know that they're not. In fact, the title of this story is called The Economy Is Not Bad, It's You. <laughs> and so all of this is being derived from a recent poll that the Wall Street Journal did. And in this poll, the results revealed that 74% of people said inflation has moved in the wrong direction in the past year. And the person who's writing this column says, this is simply not true. This is just a fact. This is a data point that inflation is coming down. So anybody who thinks that inflation is going the wrong way is just misinformed is basically what they're telling people. Well, Let's think about this for a moment. 74% of people think inflation is going the wrong way. So last time I checked, inflation is still going up, right? We don't have deflation at the moment. So deflation is when prices are coming down. Inflation is when prices are going up. For 74% of people to say that inflation is going the wrong way, I think that they are correct because inflation is going the wrong way. It's been too high for too long. Really, in an ideal world, I think most people wouldn't even want any inflation at all because all inflation does is make our lives more expensive. We know that the government and the Fed love inflation because it inflates away their massive amount of debt that they continue to drag us into year after year and makes that debt cheaper to pay off, which they're never really having an intention to pay off anyways, which is why they need to keep this whole Ponzi scheme going. So this guy's sole argument for this is saying, well, because inflation is coming down, then inflation is moving in the right direction, meaning that, well, at least it's not going up, right? Well. Okay, that's a fair point, but that doesn't make anything cheaper. And that's what everybody really cares about. Everybody really just cares about the cost they pay for everyday items and how that affects their monthly budget. I'm sure most people don't care if the inflation number is up or down as long as it's making regular life hard to afford. Because of course they go on to say, well, you know, the uh, CPI in February was 3.2% compared with 6% a year before that. So things are definitely moving in the right direction. Anybody who doesn't see that is just delusional. Here's the funniest part of this right here. He goes, yes, some individuals face higher inflation, someone who bought a house for instance, but for the average person, inflation went down. So you're telling me that unless you bought a house, inflation's coming down? What about everybody who's paying rent? Pretty sure those people are seeing inflation continue to rage up too. In fact, rent is one of the main reasons that the CPI is still above the Fed's target, okay? Because they don't really track home prices in there, they track rent prices. So who's really misinformed now? So here's an interesting chart. This chart says, has the economy or your state's economy gotten better or worse in the last two years? And the graph shows the net share of people answering better. So in all these different states, the, the highest one was Arizona, where probably about 30% of people said that it's better than it was two years ago. And all the rest of them are, you know, maybe like 10, 15%, the rest of the states on this list. Which means that the vast majority of people are saying that their lives are not better now than they were two years ago. And it's because of inflation. It's because of how much things cost, guys. Everything, food, housing, gas, cars, you name it. The stuff that we all need to buy costs way too much now. And that's why people aren't feeling good. But they say in here, when it comes to the economy, the vibes are at war with the facts and the vibes are winning. And of course, they say this is bad news for President Biden. We're not going to get into any of that stuff. But they go on to say that the vibe seems symptomatic of a broader pessimism disconnected from the data. They say that people sometimes conflate inflation with the level of prices and believe inflation is getting worse because the price level keeps going up. It rarely goes down. That's exactly right. We talked about this a few days ago that deflation is not in the cards, guys. In fact, our government in cahoots with the Fed 
does everything in their power to make sure we don't experience an ounce of deflation because that would be bad for the economy. You know, we can't have prices come down. We can't have people save any of their money or stop spending. That would be devastating. And to me, it sounds like they want you to believe that inflation is coming down but it's still high and that that's a good thing. Like that's what they're trying to trick people into thinking here. Like, hey folks, wake up. Inflation is coming down. This is a good thing. You guys should be happy, not pissed off at us. Now in the defense of the people who wrote this, they do say that half the people get it wrong when it comes to inflation because when asked, it found out that half of the respondents defined inflations correctly as rising prices and the other half defined it incorrectly, such as price gouging or overpriced everything. So some people might conflate high prices with high inflation. So some people just don't understand what inflation is, but even people that don't understand the meaning, they still get the idea like, hey, wait a minute, uh, we're still paying more for stuff now than we were a year ago. Here's where it gets really interesting if you ask me. It says that 47% of the people polled here think that their investments or retirement savings went in the wrong direction in the past year, which is a period when the stock market roared to record highs and home values held steady or rose and interest on savings went up. They say that the average consumer retirement account at Vanguard grew 19% last year. That doesn't make up for the 20% decline that we saw in 2022, especially after inflation, but it hardly qualifies as the wrong direction. <laughs> so once again, they want you to believe that all the losses you took in 2022, now that 99% of those losses have been recovered as of today, that you're supposed to be happy about that. Even though when you account for inflation, that means you still are in the negative, actually. And 56% of people in this poll said that the economy had gotten worse rather than gotten better over the past two years. And that they say that's also not true because we had robust job numbers, which all got revised down every single month last year. Let's not forget that. And unemployment still at its lowest level in nearly half a century. And also we've seen GDP grow as well, which we know is mainly due to all the government jobs that have been produced over the past couple of years to handle this massive illegal immigration situation we have. Now I will say this is an interesting one because I think that even if you benefited from this run up in inflation and the stock market going crazy last year and home prices going up, even if you're somebody that benefited from all that stuff, let's say you have an investment account that rose in value, you have a home that rose in value and uh, you even got a raise, okay? Let's say that you're doing really good, you know, economically speaking. Now I'd be willing to bet somebody that still benefited from all of this inflation and all of the rise in asset prices is still not happy with the situation because unless you're liquidating all that stuff and taking the money out of all those investments right now and putting that towards something, you haven't really fully realized the gain, first of all, just yet. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, even if you did liquidate everything to realize the gains, the money doesn't go as far as it used to. Okay, so it's harder to be happy about it because now you need all that extra money, you need all those extra winnings from this casino economy in order to just make up for all the lost purchasing power that we've seen due to inflation. Now, this whole situation reminds me of lo a lot when I was a kid. I always think about the McDonald's game that they had, the Monopoly game, where you could win a million dollars, you know? And I used to think, man, that sounds like a lot of money. A million dollars, you could hit a million dollars, you know, back in the mid 90s and never have to work a day, a day again in your life. And while that still might be true for some people, it's definitely not for the vast majority of people, especially if you live in an expensive area like here, a million dollars today is not gonna carry you into retirement. Just like it would have been really exciting to win a million dollars back in 1995, it would have nowhere near the same level of excitement, if you ask me, in 2024 because of inflation. So I think that's why people that even have seen a positive growth in their retirement accounts and you know value of their investments are still not happy with this economy because they know they need to see that appreciation just to kind of keep up. Okay, it's not a real appreciation. It's all inflation appreciation. It's out of necessity. Check out the yachts.
can feel the rumble of that thing from here. Now here's one of the most interesting phenomenons of this poll data. Even though most people say that the overall economy is bad, when they rate their own state's economy, they say it's much better. It's also similar to how when people ask um, how Congress is doing, they say it's not doing good, and then uh, whenever they ask about their own state's representatives, they give them a much higher mark, thinking that they're doing better. And I kind of noticed this bias in my comments as well. I always see people that hate the president and uh, think he's doing a terrible job and all of this, and I'm not going to get into all of that. But it proves this point that a lot of people think, well, you know, if Biden's not president anymore and somebody else gets elected like Trump, that things are going to turn around and be so much better tomorrow, which is not really going to be the case, guys. We printed six trillion dollars and whoever's president next is not going to be able to rectify that. And we all know that none of these politicians are willing to accept deflation. So nobody has the goal of making prices come down either. Really, no matter who gets elected, we're gonna be in the same boat when it comes to the cost of living, if you ask me. Of course, you may have your other reasons to change who you want to be in charge of our country, but when it just comes to the cost of living alone, I don't think anybody who's next up in the seat is gonna be able to do much about that unless they're willing to make sure we see some deflation. Oh, but it gets better, guys. They say all of this suggests that the bad vibes about inflation and the economy are interlaced with a deeper pessimism about the country, which is called referred pain. Basically, what this means is that inflation evokes broader feelings of injustice, so people tend to believe that prices rise faster than wages and that companies raise prices because they can, but don't raise wages because they don't have to and that the rich always do better with inflation. And they even go on to say here that th those things are true at times, but not over long periods of time. Like, okay, that's always true, guys. It's always true that inflation is robbing you blind because that's basically the definition of inflation, reducing your purchasing power. It's a tax that we never voted for. And of course, companies are always trying to get away with paying their employees the least amount possible while profiting the most amount possible. That's always true as well. And we know for a fact that wages are not keeping up with inflation right now. And then they also say that the rich do better with inflation. Well, that's always going to be true as well because the more assets you own, then the more inflation benefits you, just like we were talking about earlier. If you have a 401k and an investment portfolio and you own a couple investment properties in your own home and you have gold and silver, you benefited tremendously from this run up in inflation. But that doesn't mean you're gonna be happy about it because you need that extra money now just to break even. And then they go on to say here that really what's going on here is the problem is you because it's just this overall feeling of pessimism when the data doesn't support it okay and they say one particular culprit is the media especially social media now this is where this applies here this video you're watching right now guys so pay close attention here every time there's a negative word in the headline it increases its click-through rate by 2.3 percent people consume media that confirms their biases and media especially social media with its finely tuned algorithms algorithms tend to give consumers what they want. The media and the public are negative for the same reason. They are worried about the country and it will take more than lower inflation to change that. So here's what you're supposed to do instead, guys. You're supposed to stop looking at the truth. You're supposed to stop looking at people uh, being evicted. You're supposed to stop looking at people not be able to afford to pay their bills and only look at the good news stories from now on. Go look at the stories that talk about how much inflation is coming down and how this is the greatest economy in the world right now because you're seeing a lot of those at the moment. Because after all, if you read enough lies, you're going to start believing it. So that's what they want you to do instead. Just start telling yourself it's going to be okay, even though you can barely afford the rent, even though you're being kicked out of your rental and your rent is going to almost double when you find the next place. But don't worry about that. Never mind how you're going to afford that because this is the greatest economy ever. None of that stuff matters. Now, obviously, I'm being sarcastic here, but personally, I don't think people watch my channel or other news stories or channels for that matter about these things to confirm what they already believe. I think that you guys watch because you see different examples of these things happening in your own life 
And then when you see a headline that confirms that, you're like, oh, let's take a look at that and see this video. Like, I get comments all the time about people saying, yeah, that happened to my brother, you know, my, my sister's the same way, you know, she can't stop spending her money, she's eyeballs deep in debt. So, you know, these stories resonate with people in their own real life experiences. It's not that it's all made up or people want to believe it, it's that they see it happening in their own personal life and then bang, here's a story about it. And because a lot of the things I talk about here on the channel come from real people's lives, you guys relate to that. So I think that's what really gets the views and gets the clicks, not the fact that it's negative, but also, let's be honest here, guys. If I were to put the title of this video that inflation goes down as GDP inches up, would you watch it? Probably not, right? Why not? Let's, let's break this down for a second. It's not because it's a positive headline, it's because it's irrelevant to your personal life, okay? That means nothing to you. Seeing inflation come down or GDP inch up, what does that do for you? Does that help you afford rent this month? Does it help you buy more groceries than you could last month? No, it doesn't. So the fact of the matter is, is all these positive news stories that we see today, it's not enough to make people feel like things are going well. What people really have is their own real life experiences to look at and that's it. So I think the reason people don't click on good headlines as much as the negative ones is because they can't relate to it. They're not seeing this as the reality in their life. It's just something that they're being told about somebody else, but they're not seeing it for themselves. And all the people in the comments that say things are great are the ones that it's actually going great for, you know? But that doesn't represent the vast majority of the population. But all this isn't by imagination, guys, because you know what? You have a bunch of banks right now that are literally extending the loans on these office buildings and they're what's called extend and pretend. And what they're trying to do is delay the maturity date for all these upcoming uh, mortgages on these office buildings. So that way these people don't go bust. That's what they're trying to do right now. And if the economy was so great, they wouldn't have to do that, right? And that's just obviously one example, but it's one of the biggest problems that our economy is facing right now is the collapse of commercial real estate. They say here that investors have been bracing for waves of loan maturities in commercial real estate, which would force a lot of tough choices about whether to restructure or write off mortgages to landlords struggling with occupancy and rental rates. So are those signs that the economy is going well if office buildings cannot pay their mortgages? I don't think so. So what they're trying to do right now is let's just pretend it's all going to be okay, okay? We're just going to delay these maturity dates until one day interest rates are lower than today and then we'll, we'll let them refinance then. That's what they're trying to do. And the problem is this is the premise of how they're trying to run the entire world and our economy today. And I think social media has actually brought attention to this. You know, channels like mine and other channels that you guys watch have made people aware of the fact like, yeah, our whole economy is built on this premise of let's extend and pretend. And people are sick of it. You know, people are more pessimistic now because they're realizing that that's how things work. People are sick of the lies. They're tired of, you know, being lied to and, you know, hearing these meaningless figures about GDP inching up and the economy doing great if it doesn't reflect their reality. And when you look at real reality, when it comes to commercial real estate, we can see it's a ticket to the Titanic right now, but we're just going to try to plug up the hole as much as we can before the ship goes down is essentially what they're trying to do. And this is what they're trying to do with the entire economy, if you ask me. And when you take a look at this chart, it shows you how bad this is, okay? These are the expected maturities of banks' commercial real estate loans by the year. 2024, as you can see, is the biggest year in the next coming decade, and 2025 and 2026 still has quite a few of them as well. They estimate about 40% of the commercial real estate loans coming due this year in 2024 were actually from 2023 pretend and extend loans. So these were already supposed to mature last year, and they thought, oh, by 2024, the situation is going to be better, interest rates are going to be lower. Mm -mm. Not the case. And we know that offices and commercial real estate is in trouble in general, guys. I saw a separate story today talking about how office space now is basically at all-time highs when it comes to vacancies. And they're at vacancy levels we haven't seen since the 2008 great financial crisis. 
So that's a sign things are going well. So then they go on to say, as unsatisfying as it might be, pushing out maturities can be the right answer. For one, interest rates are set to fall, that's what they said about this year, which may bring some relief for landlords struggling to raise rents sufficiently to pay for mortgages at today's high rates. I mean, how is anybody supposed to trust this system, guys, when every single time there's just the slightest a problem that comes up that our government, the Fed, and the banks all work in cahoots to come in and bail out a sector of the economy that they deem worthy of a bailout. Because the fact of the matter is, if things were going as well as we're continually being told like we started off with in this video, then we wouldn't see situations like this. We wouldn't have to see extend and pretend with commercial real estate. We wouldn't have to see all of the forbearances and uh, moratoriums on evictions and all of this during the pandemic if things were really going great. We wouldn't be seeing credit card debt ballooning to all-time highs literally month by month right now and people not being able to pay their bills. None of that stuff would be happening if this economy actually was good. Also, all these companies that are struggling with commercial real estate, if things were going great, would be so flush with cash that even though it would cost more for them to refinance, it would be no big deal because, hey, they're raking in the dough. We can afford it, but they can't. So stop being so negative about everything being negative, okay? <laughs> Try to see the bright side of everybody going broke, guys. There's benefits to this, especially if you're one of the rich ones, you have money, you're gonna be able to take advantage of this. Come on, capitalism. Hurrah. So I don't know guys, let me know why you watch my channel. Let me know why you think the negative headlines are more catchy. Is it because it confirms your biases or is it because it's just what you see happening all around you? Let me know. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.